Hi everyone, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to four player game, Harbor, designed by Scott Elms and published by Tasty Minstrel Games. Gull's Bottom is a bustling harbor full of ambitious entrepreneurs of every shape and variety, and you're one of them. And you'll be competing to sell your goods for the best prices and acquire the most prestigious properties so you can be declared the Harbor Master. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. First, place the market board in the center of the table and give each player a pawn. I'm going to set up for two players, so I'll return these unused ones to the box. If you have three to four players, you can use the optional Inland Traders expansion, which is shown on this side of the market board. But if you don't want to use it, just flip the market board over and you don't have to. But either way, I'll go over that optional expansion a little later in the video. This is the building deck. First shuffle it and then deal out, face up, three plus the number of players. This is a two player game, so I'll be dealing out five buildings and then place the rest of the deck face down nearby. If three or more of the buildings have this buy a building symbol, then reshuffle and deal out five new buildings. These are the player boards. All have one similar side as well as a unique side. Before playing, determine if players will use the same sides, in which case you just deal one to each player, or if they want to have the unique sides with special buildings and unique abilities, deal two to each player. Then the players choose the one they want to keep, returning the unchosen one and any undealt player boards back to the box. Let me give you a quick tour of your player board. Here is the name of your character and its picture, along with some fluff text and your starting building and its special abilities, along with your character's unique ability as well. And these spaces down here are your warehouse. That's where you'll store your goods during the game. These are the goods markers and the bonus point cards. Shuffle these up and then deal one for each space on the market board. So here we see fish. I would take one fish good token and place it on the first space. And then for the second space, we have stone, then wood, and of course, finally, livestock. Optionally, you can then reshuffle these bonus cards and deal one secretly to each player. You can look at your own bonus card, but don't let anyone else see them. I'll explain how those work a little bit later. Now the players collect one of each good token, returning any unused ones to the box. These will be placed on the spaces of your warehouse to keep track of how many goods that you have. For example, if I place the fish token on this space, I would be saying that I currently have three fish. You can never have more than six of a single good or less than zero. To show that you have zero of a good, just take it off the track. You can also stack goods on the same space. So by doing this, I'm saying that I have two livestock and two wood. To begin the game, each player allocates their tokens however they want so long as they have a total of three goods. Right now, I'm showing a total of four goods, so I might adjust it to look like this. One livestock and two wood. And that's the setup. Harbor is played over a series of turns. On your turn, you'll place your worker in a building, and that will allow you to acquire or trade goods, adjust the market values of goods, so that when you sell your goods, you'll accumulate enough money to be able to buy one of the buildings. Once you've purchased your fifth building, and that includes the building that you start with, then you trigger the end of the game. Everyone else gets one more turn, and then the player with the most points wins. And the majority of the points are going to come from the buildings that you acquire. The game begins with the first player, and the first player is the person who is most recently on a boat. And then the game proceeds clockwise around the table. On your turn, you must move your pawn to a vacant building. That is, a building that does not already have another player's pawn on it. Now this can be your own building, a building on the central area, or even an opponent's building. You just can't leave it on the building it started the turn on. Each building has an action. And when you move to that building, you have to perform the action to the best of your ability. And many of these actions are represented by symbols, but they also include text to help explain exactly what you're supposed to do. For example, this building tells you to lose three of any one good in order to collect four of any other good. When you lose or gain goods, you adjust the tokens in your warehouse accordingly. And it's very important to note, with effects that show an arrow, like this one, if you cannot complete the first part, 
you don't get the outcome. So if I only had two fish in my warehouse, I wouldn't have three of any good to be able to trade in, so I would not be able to gain this benefit, and therefore I would not actually be able to go to this building at all. However, I do have three fish, and that's what I'll use to trade in, reducing fish to zero, and then I'll gain four of another good. In this case, I'll choose wood. Remember, you can never have more than six of each good type. So if, say, later on, I gained three more wood, I would move this token two spaces and have to stop here, losing any excess that I was owed. If a building's effect shows an and symbol, then you must complete both effects if you're able, but you can do them in any order. You can also place your worker on another player's building, even the building that's on their character card, again, as long as that space is empty. You gain the benefit there, but then you have to pay them a good of your choice by reducing one of your goods by one, and then they increase that same good by one in their warehouse. Now, you could be a little sneaky and choose a good that they already have six of, because you would still lose one of that good, but they could not gain any more because they're already at that good's maximum. As I mentioned, the buildings explain how to use their effects, but this symbol, which allows you to buy a building, we need to explore a little further, so let's look at that now. When you take the action to buy a building, you will first be able to sell any number of goods that you have in your warehouse. You will receive a dollar value for those goods based on what's showing in the market. And then you will use that money to pay the cost in the top right hand corner of one of the buildings here in the general supply. You'll collect that building and add it to your personal tableau. But to really illustrate this, let me move the market a little closer to this player and assume we're a few turns in. I'll give this player a few additional resources and show you exactly how this works. To ship a good that you own, you need to have at least as much of that good as is shown on the market board here above the token. So to ship fish, I need to have two or more. I only have one fish, so I can't ship that item. Likewise, wood. I need to have four or more. I only have two, so I can't ship wood either. Oh, let's take a look here at stone. I have three stone, and you need three or more. So I could ship the stone, and to do that, I reduce my stone value to zero, and then I shift this token down. And this tells me I get three dollars. Now I know from looking at the buildings available, they all cost more than three dollars. And if you cannot ship enough goods to be able to afford a building, then you cannot take the buy a building action. But I do have one other good here, this livestock. I need to have five or more. I actually have six. So I can sell this good, but you always completely sell the good. So even though I have more than I need, I have to reduce the value to zero. But now I can move this token down and I gain $5. Five plus three means I have eight. So I could afford the blacksmith, the ranch, or the golem crafters because none of these cost more than $8. At the end of the game, Whichever buildings I own will provide me this number of victory points as shown in the top left hand corner. So that's certainly one consideration when I'm picking out buildings to purchase. But also keep in mind, if I pick up a building that I think will be popular for other players to use, then every time they place their worker on that building, I will be able to gain a resource from them. And buildings provide some different symbols here. And these have additional benefits, and we'll look at those in a moment. For now though, I've chosen to purchase this building. And even though it has another player's worker on it, I still take the building, that worker will travel with it. You lose any excess money that you don't spend. And you can only buy one building at a time. Once a building has been taken, immediately replace it with the top card of the building deck. Once you've completed your purchase, the final step is to move the goods on the top row to the far right spaces, and then the goods in the bottom row will follow these arrows until they have slid back into place on the top row. And so now we have new market values for the next player who goes to purchase a building. Remember, during this setup, you have the option of using the other side of the market board, which has this Inland Traders expansion. And that simply allows you, when you go to buy a building before shipping any goods, to sell one of each of the goods in order to collect three dollars. And then you can ship goods as normal to gain additional money. There are four different kinds of circled symbols that you will find on your starting building and on other buildings that you acquire, and each of these have special effects. Each coin you have on your buildings reduces the cost of each future building you buy by one dollar per coin symbol that you have. 
If you have a top hat symbol, then you can use another player's building without paying them the toll. You only need one top hat symbol for this ability. Having more than one doesn't give you any additional benefits. The total number of anchors you have on your buildings can give you benefits when you use other buildings. So this player we see has two anchors. Let's move their worker to the ranch out in the general area. This ability says that the player gains one livestock per anchor. So they increase their livestock by two. The more anchors you have, the more beneficial going to the ranch will be. Finally, for each warehouse symbol that you have, you may, after shipping goods, retain that number of goods. So for example, let's say I shipped out this wood and this livestock. I could now keep any combination of three of those goods because I have three warehouse symbols. So maybe I decide to keep two wood and one livestock. Now I couldn't choose to keep three wood and no livestock because I didn't have three wood to begin with. I only had two. Likewise, you can't choose to keep goods that you didn't ship. I want to remind you, if you're using the unique side of your player board, don't forget your character has a special ability that you can use throughout the game as explained right here. Now, after a player has bought their fifth building, and remember, count their starting building as one of them, then each other player gets one more turn. Then players total the victory points found on the buildings they own and on any bonuses from special abilities. If you're using the optional bonus points cards, reveal those now and trade remaining goods of that type for the victory point value shown. So I'm allowed to trade leftover stone and I have four of them and four stone will give me three additional points. The player with the most points is the winner. If there's a tie, the tied player with the most buildings is the winner. If there's still a tie, then the tied player with the most resources wins the game. The winner collects the Harbor Master card. This is the key to the city. And there's some special instructions on the back for what you should do. I'll leave those for you to discover on your own. There's also rules for solo play. You will use this training dummy and all of the details are on the back. I'll leave that for you to discover on your own, but otherwise, that's how you play Harbor. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.